Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Daly. I spent 20 years with United Press International, most of it with the old UPI radio network. And my favorite assignment was going on the road producing and hosting American Montage. It was an hour-long weekly program. Now here's an edited version of one of those shows. How do you best describe actor Cesar Romero? Latin lover? Swashbuckler? Or a cartoon character on Batman? I sat down with Cesar Romero at his apartment in the Brentwood section of Los Angeles to talk about Hollywood, the changes that have gone on between the golden days of Hollywood and the Hollywood of today. The industry was different. We were all under contract to studios. The studios were run by the, by the picture makers. We had people like Louis B. Mayer, Daryl Zanuck, uh, Samuel Goldwyn, the Warner Brothers. No, that, that doesn't exist anymore. Everybody was under contract to a studio. We all knew each other, all the players from all the different studios. We, it was like a big family. And within that, uh, the motion picture industry in those days was a very definite uh, motion picture colony in this town. And within that motion picture colony was a very elegant society in this town. And all the social functions, you'd see every big star in the business would be there. Mary Pickford, Charlie Chaplin, Douglas Fairbanks, Norma Shearer, Clark Gable, uh, uh, you know, everybody, everybody. That that doesn't exist anymore. There's uh, There's no elegance in this town anymore. There's no glamour to the motion picture industry. It's a completely different uh, ball game. You see pictures of, uh, of the, some of the uh, top stars today at an opening and all, and they're there with, with the T-shirts and mm-hmm. open collars. No, there's no elegance in this town anymore. Of course, even in radio when, uh, in the 30s and even into the 40s, uh, announcers after 6 in the evening quite often, even though they weren't seen, would wear evening clothes yeah. just because that, that was the tradition. Yeah. It, it's almost disturbing, I think, to come to Los Angeles t- uh, today and, of course, L.A. is just miles and miles of miles. But you compare the fact that it, it is, in many ways, a very lackluster, many parts run-down city, uh, which has sprawled all over the place, compared to earlier, where you... I don't know, from what I see in newsreels, just generally L.A. had a more of a genteel feel about it. Yeah, well, everything around here concentrates on Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. Beverly Hills. You don't, uh, you know... Los Angeles, this is Los Angeles here, where I am in Brentwood. But everything, everything is located centrally in Beverly Hills. You don't, you don't go downtown uh, to, uh, for anything in Los Angeles. You don't go down there. Unless you want to catch a Greyhound yeah, bus. Yeah, who wants That's to go down right. there, you know? You, you, so uh, this, is a, th- th- this city is connected with a lot of s- small towns, really, except Beverly Hills, which is a city in itself. What was the attitude of the fan like in those days as compared to today? We, we talk about the process being totally different. Were stars held more in a sense of awe? Or maybe oh, yes, completely. In this town, years ago, I, I, can't, I can't begin to tell you the difference. There are no fans around here that you see any place. You know, even the photographers the new, uh, the, for the... Uh, uh, no uh, young kids with autograph books. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. Hmm. Is it sad for you to see what's no, happening? No, it's not sad. It doesn't bother Everything me. Everything changes. doesn't bother me. Everything changes. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad that I had those years because it was great fun. Uh, this, uh, this was an industry that, uh, uh, that was very exciting. Hollywood is no longer the capital, uh, the motion picture capital of the world. Pictures are made all over the world today and all over this country. Back when they were cranking out a picture a week many of these studios, an A picture and a B picture. I mean, the, the, there was an intense shooting schedule. Uh, were there a lot of days in which it was just really frustrating It became take after take? Well, it all depends on the director. You know, I worked with uh, some directors who'll take uh, uh, just uh, one take or two takes. Uh, you work with others like Von Sternberg, but who, who'll take 50 takes. Yeah, Frank Capra told me that you if know. you liked the first one, that was it. Yeah, that's right. But there are a lot of a lot of directors like von Sternberg. I did I did a picture with von Sternberg. I played opposite Marlena Dietrich in it. This is 1935, and he just make you do made you do things over and over and over again, really for no reason at all. 
Was he it had me running down chamber? a flight of stairs, for God's sake. And he's, every time I do it, he said, do it again, faster, faster. And he made me do it about 15 times until wow. I finally fell down, damn near broke my neck. I went to the, uh, uh, to see the, the, the rushes the next day. I was standing and uh, sitting in front of him, and he, did, he turned to the cutter and he said, take two, print two. You know, he had, uh, and with Dietrich, he, he, he made her repeat things over and over and over again. So it all, depend, it all depends on who you were working with. Whom did you like working with the best, as far as directors go? Oh, I loved working with Walter Lang. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he was a great, wonderful director for musicals. And I did uh, several pictures. With I did a picture with Carol Lombard in, in back in 1934 or 35, Love Before Breakfast. I did two uh, uh, Shirley Temple pictures with him. And, uh, and I did uh, several, uh, about two pictures with Betty Grable with him. But he was a wonderful director, so wonderful to work with. Did you cringe sometime when you saw, I guess the list goes up, who the, who the staff members are going to be, and you see that director? Did you ever have a latitude to go to the producer and say, wait a minute, uh, this guy's tough to work with? Or was that no, part and parcel of the studio no. system? You just did it. Certainly you just do what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And you had no control over that at all. You did what you, what you were supposed to do. If you didn't want to do it, you take a suspension. Oh, that's no fun. <laughs> so, you know, certainly. So you always did uh, what the studio uh, assigned you to. There was I was with uh, uh, Zanuck for 15 years. I got along very well with him. And uh, it was just, uh, you knew what you could do, what you couldn't do. You couldn't use swear words. There was one with the wind, frankly, my dear, I don't give oh, a damn. Oh, that was a big it shock to everybody. Awful. They wondered, how the hell did he get away with it? It was very different in those days. You just uh, couldn't use those slang words. But yet you... you got the point across. Yes, because it wasn't necessary. No, the writing was so good in many cases. And we had some, w we had some wonderful writers in those days, too. We don't have those writers in the, in the business today. Nobody lives here. They all live up back east. They live up in, uh, in Connecticut. And so they're uh, even among the actors there today. They're kind of absentee well, landlords. They just show up. Very few people live here of the big names in pictures today. Aside from the westerns that were shot in the valley, and even here in the 1990s, there are still within 10 miles of L.A. some very scrubby places you could do a western wasn't almost everything filmed in there was very little on location studio we exotic all, things we, were we, done we, with projection we had the the back lot of the studio at 20th century fox we had everything you you could imagine every we, small town every western village uh, parisian street and everything they'd build it on the back lot you didn't have to go out of very few uh, pictures in those days when we went on a location like captain from castile we did, we made it in mexico and we uh, spent about three months in Mexico. Uh, another picture that I did, uh, uh, we just shot up in uh, deep waters. We shot up in Maine. But uh, that was very seldom that you have to go out of town. Which kind of movies did you like the best? Which, which did you feel most comfortable with? The, the big musicals, the intimate love I stories? Did, uh, uh, really, I, I enjoyed them all. It didn't make any comedy or a serious picture of Captain Castile, I loved just as much as I, I, I enjoyed playing the Joker in Batman. That's what I was going to say. You, you, <laughs> you, have, you have played your personality. You've been able to adapt it so much. I mean, here, here's a suave leading man sweeping the women off their feet and a swashbuckler and then a, a cartoon character on Batman. Oh, that was great fun. I so loved playing Tell us about what, what the Batman experience was like. Well, the Batman experience was just wonderful. I'd get it. I did about 22 episodes uh, of the, uh, in the series, you know, and plus the motion picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very, very pleasant experience. It's so funny to watch those because it, it, it was so, I don't know whether the proper word is campy or not. Yeah, well, But it was just so cartoon-like, and that was the wonderful well, we thing did, about that's it. That's right. Well, we, we played the, we played the, uh, the, uh, the cartoon. I get a lot of fan mail on it all the time. They all say, you were the best joker. You were the best joker. Well, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cesar Romero, thank you for taking the time to join me this morning. Well, not at all. I was glad talking to you. And there you have it, another edited episode of one of the American Montage programs prepared for the UPI radio network back in the 1980s and 90s. 
I'm Dennis Daly. Thanks for listening. Thanks for going with me this week. And check YouTube for more American Montage programs.